Hi, this is Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington, and today I wanted to talk about uh, some things that can go wrong when installing a, uh, a pickup in an acoustic guitar and also uh, some ways to avoid this kind of damage that we're going to talk about and um, kind of some recommended tools um, and methods used for uh, drilling this end pin hole um, that you generally need to drill to install one of these pickup systems. So let's go ahead and start. Um, this came in last week. This is a, an Epiphone Masterbuilt. If you're familiar with Epiphone Masterbuilt Acoustics, uh, this is kind of in their higher end. Um, it's, you know, it, it's a nice guitar. It's, uh, it's something that costs money. It's something that, you know, pros play. This is, you know, this is a guitar that, um, you know, kind of warrants some you know attention as a as a you know a fine instrument and so um you know we're definitely going to want to make sure that this is a good repair job and uh make sure that the pickups are actually installed correctly uh, but let's go ahead and talk about what happened here um what happened was that um there was an attempt made at drilling this hole using a twist drill bit uh and what is a twist drill bit, you might ask? So let me go ahead and show you one. Um, so this here is a twist drill bit. You know, you've seen them before. This is the uh, typical kind of drill bit that you see most places. Every single hardware store will sell one of these. Sometimes you even find them in places that aren't hardware stores just because these are so common. Um, you know, it's just kind of a ubiquitous thing. When most people think drill bits, this is what they think. Um, and this is a tool that is not, um, shall we say, delicate. It's not, uh, it's not made for precision work, really. Um, this is designed for throwing a hole through material very quickly and very efficiently. Um, and so, you know, this thing has a tendency to kind of tear some material. It has a tendency to kind of, you know, bust material out the, out the back of whatever material you're drilling through. It, it, it's it's just maybe not the best tool for the job, which is one of the reasons why, like, you'll although you'll see these in luthier shops for sure, um, we have other drill bit styles that we tend to use more for precision work. Um, and we also have other methods of creating holes in things um, that don't even really technically involve a drill bit. Um, and so we're going to get into that here in a second. So first of all, I'm going to talk about what happened here and how that damage occurred. Um, well, so what happened is, is that that drill bit went in, and as it was tearing out that material, again, we're talking about a kind of an undelicate tool here, it started tearing material and, and heating up most likely and kind of separated a little bit of that glue that's gluing the, uh, the sides here to the end block in here. That could be what happened. But the bottom line is that it allowed this material to tear away from that block. Um, there's a block of wood behind here where these two sides come together and are glued together that's called the end block, and that material tore away from it because of this because of a twist drill bit. So this is definitely not the tool that you want to use for this job. Um, so what do you want to use? I'm going to go over the best recommendation first, and then we'll start going over some alternatives. So the first thing is this guy here. This is a very expensive tool, which is why I, you know, going to give you some alternatives here in a bit. Um, but this is a this is an end pin reamer. Um, this thing cuts from the side rather than cutting from, you know, cutting in the same fashion at the front like a, like a twist drill bit does. These things operate by two little blade surfaces up here, kind of cutting their way through, whereas the blades on this thing are all facing the side. And the way that this works is that you drill a pilot hole first, just big enough for you to get the reamer in. And that way, if there's some tear out, it's fine because what you're going to do is you're going to ream that right all the way through. And any kind of little tear out that was caused by your you know, pilot hole is going to be gone because this thing is going to expand that hole to the size it needs to be to uh, accommodate that end pin jack. Um, this is the best tool for this job. Um, like you're not going to find anything that works better than this really um this is an expensive tool like i said you can check them out on stumac i don't know what they sell for now i think i want to say that i paid like 60 for this back in the day when i bought it but that was a long time ago so i don't know what these cost now um but this thing here is your best friend if you're going to be doing this job a lot 
um, and it does a very fine job. And because it cuts from the side, it's a very safe way to create these very large holes. And when you see these large holes, like tuner holes or you know this guy here, reamers tend to be the tool that we want to gravitate towards because of that safety and cutting from the side. Um, these really just do that job very, very effectively, very, very well. And um, I have all kinds of reamers all over the shop for doing all kinds of different stuff. And usually when we're talking precision, those are the tools that I reach for first. But you may not want to spend 60 bucks or whatever these things cost. And you may want to do uh, something a little bit cheaper. And, uh, you know, it's totally understandable and also possible. So I'm going to show you a couple of alternative um, bits that you can use for drilling that hole. The first would be a brad point bit. Now, this is a bit that uh, people who aren't carpenters probably aren't as familiar with as that twist bit. And you'll notice that the tip is shaped quite differently. You've got a little point in the middle and you've got these two little pointy things on the side. This is a drill bit that's designed for precision drilling. Basically, you figure out where you're gonna put the hole, where the center of the hole needs to be, and you put a little punch in it with, a, with an awl or you can even use the, trip of the tip of the drill bit, and then you put that tip of the drill bit right into that hole and you drill. And the way that this cuts is that, first of all, it cuts from the edges. So it'll start this, like, kind of, you know, an auger kind of thing where it'll kind of twist around where the hole is going to go and uh, cut from the side, kind of like a reamer would. And then it'll, you know, as it goes in, it'll, it'll start engaging these little blade surfaces and start cutting similar to a twist drill bit, but, you know, kind of creating that little buffer first by kind of severing those those uh, wood fibers before it's trying to, you know, pull those things out using that twist method. This is a fairly safe way to go, and if you were going to, you know, do this without a reamer, this would be one way that you could do it, although I recommend the reamer. One thing that um, is good to keep in mind with these bits is that they cut kind of slow. So if you're using one of these things and you're used to one of those twist drill bits that just kind of flies through, this thing is going to cut a lot slower. It's not meant for as efficient um, work as those twist drill bits, but it will cut more accurately. So when you're drilling this hole, it's a good idea to keep very good control of that drill. You know, maybe two-hand it, put it on a surface so that you can just gently guide it in. And that way, you don't do this thing where you're drilling, 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 and it's going slow, 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 and you're frustrated and you're pushing. And then all of a sudden it busts out the back and you slam the drill into the guitar and you create damage. So that's something to avoid with this particular kind of drill bit, but this will do a fairly safe job at getting that hole cut without you know running into stuff like this. This second uh, method here that I'm going to talk about uh, involves a drill bit that I'm, I'm a little less happy recommending, but um, you know, if you've got a cheap guitar that you just like, it isn't a master build, it isn't something like that, it's just like a, Johnson or like a $99, you know, acoustic that you just want to throw a pickup in, this is probably fine. Um, you know, it, it's going to cut kind of a rough hole. I'm just going to warn you that right now. Um, and that's one of these guys here. This is called a spade bit. Um, and this is generally something that you see people buy for like, you know, one-off jobs at like, you know, Home Depot or something like drilling doorknob holes or, you know, whatever. Um, I barely touch these here. Um, I have them in my toolbox because I used to do much rougher work with, um, you know, bigger lumber doing like chicken coops and, and, you know, things like that where, you know, didn't really matter if the hole was all that accurate or, you know, whatever. But the cool thing about these is that, um, they have a couple of things going for them similar to that, um, Brad point, which is that typically these bits will have a little point right at the top and they'll have two little kind of points coming up from the side, maybe a little less pronounced than the, uh, than the uh, uh, brad point. But these also have a tendency to, you know, start in an accurate point and then go in and uh, those little tips out towards the sides will kind of sever those fibers while these blades in the front kind of cut through. This is a slower drilling blade, um, you know, kind of the same deal with, with that one. It's not designed to, to drill like super efficiently fast and, and whatnot, like a twist drill bit, but it'll do the job. Um, some things to keep in mind with these bits is that um, these bits are often very cheaply made. Um, they're they tend not to be a, a tool that is thought of for precision work. 
um, which means that sometimes the shafts will be bent, um, which causes kind of a wobble when you're using them, which causes the hole to kind of wobble a little bit, um, which can lead to, you know, a little bit of finished tear out and, and stuff like that. Won't probably lead to wood tear out like this, though. Um, so, you know, that's an option. I would definitely, you know, if you're going to go this route, you know, when you get your drill bit that you're going to use for drilling that hole, I would make sure that you test it in the, in the drill first and see if it has a, a, a lot of wobble in it and, and maybe not use that one. Um, cause these are also pretty cheap, you know, just get another one and, uh, and try that one out. But you can also order these guys here for fairly cheap, um, you know, if it's just a one-off job, you just need it for that one thing. Um, and um, I know I'm going to get slammed in the comments for this, but um, you can you can go and pick up um, both of these styles of drill bit um, down at Harbor Freight. So you can get them fairly cheap in a set as well, if that's what you're wanting. But those are some better methods of drilling that big hole for your uh, for your output jack and will tend to save you from this kind of damage and the kind of just tearing out because those twist drill bits, when you get up to this size, they're going to be extremely destructive little things and they're going to tear material out, they're going to tear finish out and they're going to make a hole that is not really ideal for the job. And so I would recommend staying away from those most of the time for most things. Um, the only time that I tend to use twist drill bits on guitars these days is when I am doing stuff like drilling pick guard screw holes or like drilling holes for tuners or something like that where it's just doesn't need to be super precise and you know it it, it needs to uh, you know it needs to be done quickly and, and generally speaking with a smaller bit because you know twist drill bits are super cheap so I don't really care if I break my 1 16th twist drill bit um, but yeah that's the way that we do it um, I'm just going to throw this in here at the end of the video just because um, but uh, I would also caution against using drills for drilling down into bridge pins um, bridge pin holes um, that's another job where we use a reamer I have two reamers for bridge pins um and that's these guys here. Um, one is a bit of a steeper taper than the other because there are two common tapers of bridge pins that you run into. Most of the time I'm using this one, some of the time I'm using this one. But yeah, um, reamers are, are, are an excellent tool and if you got the money um, or you have a friend who has one, that's the tool to use, generally speaking, for holes that need to be a precise diameter and uh, need to not tear out a whole bunch of material around them. Anyway, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. There's lots more videos like this on my channel, so you know, check those out, pass them around. Uh, if you have a specific question about something that you need help with, I prefer to get those over my Ko-Fi or uh, my Patreon, and I will get back to you as soon as I can with an answer. Um, if I receive a question via those two methods. If you leave one down in the comments, I will probably get to it eventually, but I'll be honest, I've gotten some like wall of text comments and questions sometimes that I, I just kind of like, they're, they're a lot of work to, to answer and sometimes I just skip by those. So, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll get to most comments generally, eventually. Um, in that description of the video, you can find a link to my Ko-Fi, to my Patreon, um, and, uh, you know, uh, to my website as well, where I have my uh, listings of prices, contact info, and also a page for caring for stringed instruments. And if you're here watching this video, I'm betting that you have some stringed instruments that you care for. Anyway, this has been Drew Jones of Drew's Guitar Shop in Seattle, Washington. Thank you for watching.